Good afternoon. It gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you to join today's Innovation and Leadership in Engineering Forum. My name is Christopher Chow. I'm a Dean of Engineering at Hong Kong U. I am also one of the alumni, um, and I'm very honored to be the moderator of today's uh, forum. I graduated in uh, the 80s uh, from Mechanical Engineering Department, and today we have uh, three distinguished uh, speakers who are also alumni of Hong Kong U Engineering. Uh, let me give you a brief introduction of uh, these uh, three speakers before I uh, move on and uh, let them uh, introduce uh, their uh, talk and uh, some of the uh, wisdom that they would like to share with you. Uh, you know, nowadays, engineers uh, will not just sit back and observe. Instead, we make things happen and we make modern life uh, possible. We would make use of our innovation, creativity, and professional knowledge to lead our society and also to make impact to our world. We are so happy to have uh, Dr. Ada Poon, Mr. David Lee, and uh, also uh, Mr. Uh, Ga Leung Lee with us uh, today. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Mr. David Lee still has not been able to uh, get into the system due to some technical uh, difficulty. We are now trying to uh, get out of him, but uh, we will not wait for him. We will start with uh, Dr. Ada Poon and uh, Mr. Garland Lee uh, first before we bring him uh, back to all of you. Um, Dr. Ada Poon received her BN and MPhil degrees in electrical and electronic engineering, and also uh, she got her Master of Science and PhD degree at UC Berkeley. She is currently the Associate Professor of Electrical Engineering at Stanford University. Uh, upon graduation, she spent some time in the industry before going back to academia. Uh, she is now working in uh, biomedical <coughs> engineering related research. Uh, I understand that in her talk, she will also tell you more about what uh, her background is. So I uh, will not talk too much uh, about uh, Ada. I will let her uh, brief you uh, more about what she is doing. Uh, Mr. David Lee uh, received the BBA in Information System and BN in uh, Software Engineering in 2003 and 2004. Uh, David is the co-founder and CEO of a Silicon Valley startup NEX team, which has developed a very famous AI-powered iPhone basketball app called Home Court that has been highlighted by Apple and better by NBA uh, luminaries like uh, Jeremy Lin, Mark Cuban, and Steve Nash. Uh, the app is being used by players and teams in 200 countries around the world, including NBA teams, uh, Boston Celtics, uh, Philadelphia 76ers, etc. So he also received a lot of uh, newspaper attention uh, about one year ago uh, when we invited him uh, to uh, Hong Kong U. Uh, Mr. Garland Lee received the BN in Civil and Structural Engineering and Master of Science in Civil Engineering also in 2003 and 2004. Uh, respectively. Uh, he is now uh, working as a uh, project director with uh, Bowick, uh, Chaofao, uh, Public, uh, BYTP since 2017, uh, running large-scale civil construction projects. Uh, to give you a few examples, that includes uh, MTR West Island Line, MTR Stratin Central Link, Tunnel Boring Machine Section, uh, DSD Inter Reservoir Tunnel Scheme and uh, Central Kowloon Route Project. He joined uh, Jack Agents Hong Kong Limited in 2000, year 2000 as a Scheme A graduate engineer, uh, gradually moving up his uh, ladder. Uh, he is now a fellow of the Hong Kong Institution of Engineers, a uh, corporate member of uh, Institution of Civil Engineers, and also the Institutions of uh, Structural Engineers. Um, he has uh, progressed through senior engineer to construction manager and now to uh, project management. So all of our speakers today were actually strict A students as they uh, receive uh, first class honors while studying bachelor degrees at Hong Kong U. 
I'll first invite each speaker to share their career success and development individually. A discussion section among all of us will then follow. Of course, we will spend some time on taking a few questions at the end from our participants, and you might drop the question in the chat box in Shum. Without further ado, let's start the forum. May I invite Ada to share her insights with us? Ada, please. Uh, could you see my slides? Yes. Yep. Okay. So uh, I would like to give you a brief uh, summary of my what I call is a random walk from uh, when the time I at Hong Kong U to where I'm right now. Uh, so I got I did my undergraduate at Chiboyi at University of Hong Kong. Uh, afterwards, uh, I went I went to Berkeley UC Berkeley to do my PhD study. Uh, my research is focused on information theory, which I would say that it is uh, one of the most theoretical branch in electrical engineering. So what I want to say it is I was a theorist by training, and my thesis it is in the area of mass, massive MIMO systems. What, it, what is it? So it is basically, it is one of the basic uh, fundamental technology that is included in uh, 5G system right now. So I think I did my research too early. Um, and then after, after my PhD, I went to Intel. Uh, as I mentioned, my training, it is, I'm a theorist by training, but at Intel, I did silicon chip design. So it is totally different from what I did in my PhD. Uh, after a year at Intel, I kind of taste working in a big company. And I think uh, working in a big company, it doesn't fit me well. So I quit Intel and uh, did a startup together with my PhD advisor and my friends at Berkeley. Uh, we tried to develop the first commercial CMOS 60 gigahertz system. So what is CMOS 60 gigahertz system? Um, it is a uh, technology that will enable high data rate data transmission wirelessly. So it is now being part of the high data rate Wi-Fi, which is the L2.11 AD. And also it is a key technology also in the 5G system in order to support high data rate transmission. Now being, a, being the first to do the commercialization of a no cost uh, high data rate system, usually it will not success. And we are not the exception. Uh, we, because we are the first one trying to do it at a low cost rate more than 15 years ago. Uh, we were looking at, you know, what kind of application, what, what would be the market that we're targeting at? Uh, we target at the wireless HDMI, that is, try to replace the cable, the, the, the cable that's connecting the set-top box to the high-definition TV, because it requires high data rate. Uh, we do pretty well, you know, after a year, we, we do the fundraising, our first round of funding, it is uh, 80 million uh, US dollars. So, it, it was quite good at that time. But then, at that time, uh, I look at the cable at my home that is connecting my TV to the set-top box. I don't feel this is too troublesome to me. And therefore, I thought, you know, I cannot convince myself that in my next 10 years, I'm just doing a cable replacement. This doesn't sound cool to me. And at the same time, I also, uh, I've been working in startup for one year and Intel for another year. Uh, making things cheaper and faster uh, in consumer electronic space, it really didn't resonate with me. And therefore, uh, with the encouragement from my PhD advisor, I decided to go back to academic, and then I joined the faculty at UIUC, University of Illinois at Urban and Champaign. At that time, I decided to switch my research area from being a theorist to chip design, but to biomedical systems. Uh, after two years, I think I learned a lot in the biomedical systems. Uh, I can't know what I would like to do. But at that time, because of a family issue, uh, I quit Urban and Champagne and I moved back to the Bay Area to stay closer to my family. Uh, and then I need to do something, right? So I start another company. It is in 2008. Uh, and the company is trying to commercialize NFC, near field communication. So NFC right now, it is kind of quite popular technology that is in the, in the cell phone. But at that time, it was not. So I thought NFC could be you know, one of the applications that I was looking at. It is for counterfeit drug detection and also a new form of uh, electronic payment. 
So Visa is just in the Bay Area, the Visa headquarters, so it's very convenient to talk to that. Uh, but unfortunately, it is in 2008, in September, I supposed to get the funding from venture capitalists to, to fund my company. But uh, Neiman Brothers collapsed. <laughs> so the whole economy collapsed. So, and I thought time is not with me. So a month later, I joined the faculty of Stanford. And in the past uh, 12 years, I've been focusing on uh, using electronics to treat diseases. So what, what do I mean by using electronics to treat diseases? So what we're trying to do it is to build electronics that are really, really small, such that it could put very close to the nerves or the organ where I want, to, I want it to modulate the biological activities. I want to talk to the language of our body or, or the neural system, which is the electrical signals. So electronic systems, one of the um, good things about it, it is it has very precise uh, temporal and spatial resolution. So I can very precisely to talk to the nerve in its own language, which is the electrical signals. This is different from pharmaceutical approach where it, when we take the drugs, it acts globally through our body and it may produce side effect. But the electronic approach, it acts more locally and in a very precise uh, timing. So it may provide an alternative to a uh, pharmaceutical approach or the chemical approach to modulate biological activities. And one, so in order to realize that, there's a lot of obstacles we, want to, we, we need to solve, but I'm not going to go into the detail how to solve the obstacles to make the devices really small. Uh, but instead, I would like to give you an idea of how small is small. So this here shows is the devices that compare with a, uh, a uh, regular size of the rice. This is a pacemaker. This is a pacemaker that we put in the heart to maintain the heart pacing. Uh, we've already testing these devices in different animal models from rabbit to a pig model and the project is done. Uh, the technology has been licensed to a few companies and they are applying this to uh, uranium incontinence and also, which is very important for elderly and also pain relief. In addition to do the uh, uh, cardio pacing, uh, we also do something like for the neuroscience and try to do remote mind control. So here you will see that a peppercorn size of a stimulator, we implant it in the right motor cortex of the animal. And I was very amazed when we have a remote control to turn on the devices, the animal will stop its random movement as you will see here because we implant it in the right motor cortex, so it will do the counterclockwise direction. So it will just move in a neat circle in the counterclockwise direction. Even though at this point, it doesn't want to move in that direction, but because we stimulate it, um, it forced to move in this direction. So this, is, uh, this experiment is a little bit evil, but it also illustrates a different idea of a wireless mouse. So after, you know, we feel that we are able to build devices that are very small, that is able to interface with organs and nerves. Uh, I go ahead and spend, you know, this is in the time of 1915. I decided that I want to go to jump from just building a system, engineering systems, to a specific disease. So I want to treat diseases. Uh, I take a year off in between 2015 and 2016 to think about what kind of diseases that I would like to focus on. And I come up with three criteria. One, it is currently there's no drug to treat the disease. Second, it is drugs have side effects in most of the uh, 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 chemical you know, solutions. The third, it is drug um, uh, is too expensive. So at the end, in one year of uh, searching, I decided on working on a few problems. One, it is I'm trying to treat the diseases is in the early stage Alzheimer, where we're currently there's no drug to treat it. Uh, and I'm looking into you know if a electronic approach is able to provide a solution. And second problem that we're working on it is obesity. Uh, a lot of the anti obesity drug. Uh, they tend to cause a lot of problems, side effects to the cardiovascular system. 
and we are using the electronic approach to bypass this such that people can prevent ob uh, uh, obesity or even to treat the obesity without causing any problems to the cardiovascular system of the heart. The third one that we are focusing on, uh, it is the diabetes. So we are trying to look at an electronic approach it is to provide uh, unlimited in situ supply of insulin and glucagon. That is the way we, use, we do it, it is try to also combine synthetic biology with engineering to architect a artificial pancreas such that it will use our own cells to produce insulin and glucagon uh, unlimitedly. And then the fourth one, it is the cancer. We focus, it is on brain tumor. So this, at the, you know, to, to summarize my talk, I would like to show a photo that I like a lot. Um, this is exactly try to illustrate what I'm doing. It is, I want to see if we could use electronics to provide an alternative way to treat diseases. And wow. Uh, it's five minutes, right? <laughs> okay, thank you. This is uh, amazing. Um, I noticed that our second speaker, uh, David Lee, uh, just arrived. David, are you uh, ready to uh, give your briefing to us? No, absolutely. So first of all, so sorry about this. Like, I, I mix up my time zone as well. I thought that my talk would be at like 12 midnight here. Uh, looks like, you know, I just completely screw up. So first of all, like my sincere apologies for being late and it's not my intention at all. I was in an eye meeting, like, you know, because I have um, uh, uh, like team in both Hong Kong and, uh, and, and Cooper in, 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 in West Coast in, uh, in the Bay Area. That's why like we have, I have half my meetings in uh, US daytime and uh, half my meeting at, uh, in, in nighttime. So I was, I was thinking, oh, wow, well, what's going on? And then thanks for, thanks for Monica for uh, calling me and uh, otherwise I will miss this uh, important occasion. So like, first of all, like really apologies for uh, being late. All right. So just want to give you an introduction of like, you know, who I am and, and, and what I've been doing. Um, um, I, I am an entrepreneur, like I build companies. I, you know, this is my second startup now and my first startup was founded when I was still a student in uh, Hong Kong U. Um, and, and um, you know, it's, it's, it's just kind of, and we kind of keep following that path and like now I'm doing my second one. So give you a little bit of like my background story of like how I, you know, from uh, 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 Hong Kong U, like do my first startup and then now, you know, I'm to what, what I'm doing now. So in my um, third year, um, and I was studying um, uh, a double degree program in Hong Kong at that time. Um, in my third year, uh, SARS hit Hong Kong, it's 2003. And in that summer, I was supposed to do um, and, uh, what they call industrial training, meaning that's like, it's, a, it's a qualified word of like internship, to go and find internship. Um, and it was SARS year that basically there's no internship around and, and, you know, but like, I don't even interested in doing internship in our company because I have an idea I want to, um, uh, I want to build and just want to take this special occasion then like, you know, form a team and, you know, present a proposal to Hong Kong U that like I can form my own company and hire myself as intern and I'll, a few of my other uh, 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 classmate as well as as uh, as as, uh, uh, as intern and basically co-found the company and built the first project. Actually, the first client is also Hong Kong U. Um, and you know, one thing after another, my first startup, uh, you know, going from building event management software, building like something like a, a calendar software before Google Calendar, then to build online spreadsheet, and then that thing got acquired by Apple, um, roughly. Um, five years later. Um, so I graduated in 2004 and then like Apple acquired my company at 2008. And then I joined Apple for eight years and, um, and built their, um, uh, uh, you know, um, the entire suite of like iWork. If you use, you know, Apple product, if you use a pages number keynote, um, you know, my, my team built um, the web apps for that and uh, bring in the basically collaboration feature into that suite as well. Um, so this is what I have 
in, in doing for Apple, like, you know, create product that like spent like three and a half years of my life just focusing on like building demos that to prove to Steve Jobs that like we can deliver Apple experience on a browser, which had not been something that he believed in. So like we managed to put that up and like, you know, <laughs> get his one of his, like one of the things that he finally approved before he um, he passed away in, um, in, in uh, 2014, I think. Um, um, so, you know, we, we uh, 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 you know, ship that and you know, after a while that, you know, I think, you know, is have, have uh, uh, experienced enough of Apple. And in three years ago, I left Apple and found a new company uh, called Next Team. And, um, and this time basically really purely following our passion. Um, and and uh, I, I don't know, you know, some of you may know, some of you, a lot of you may probably not that like I love, I love basketball. Is is the sports that I play when I'm young is the sports that I play when I, you know, and, and, and how is how I connect with my younger brother. They'll basically go and play pick up games like together at night and uh, uh, and it's a lot of fun. I'm not a good player, but I love the game. And, um, and you know, one night that, um, you know, my wife dropped by and watched me play and I cannot make a single shot. Then basically what inspired that, oh, can I get my phone to understand basketball? Can I get my phone to understand my shot, you know, uh, and track my highlights? And, um, and, and then we start building, like, you know, just like, you know, and, and, and cold call the coaches in the region, in, in the area, just like, you know, just, you know, get ourselves kind of connect to kind of basketball and just, you know, it's totally starting from scratch. Um, and, and again, one thing after another, um, you know, we create something that's interesting enough that like Apple put us, put me on stage, you know, I spent eight years, yeah, I put multiple products on stage, you know, in, in, when, in, in my, in my time with Apple, but like, I have not gone on stage myself and, you know, I don't, you know, just, just that, oh, wow, Apple actually think this, like, what we did is like interesting enough and put me on stage. Uh, and I got, got, went on stage with Steve Nash, if you know who Steve Nash is, he's a really, really great player and been advising us on how to build this thing. And then like NBA Take Notice and NBA is our investor now. And together with like a bunch of uh, 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 like, you know, NBA players um, have invested in the company. And, um, you know, we are, we are, we are, you know, building, um, you know, an app that can deeply understand what's in front of it. Um, you know, tracking basketball shots and understanding triple, you know, uh, great drills that like help kids, kids train kids on the, you know, body eye coordination um, and, you know, start using by like, you know, again, millions of users. Um, so, you know, this is like, like my, my soft story. I don't know whether I use my five minutes yet. I did not count, um, but like love to share more of like, you know, what I'm doing, but, but yeah, I, I just love building things. And, um, and you know, that just, just is a way of life for me. Just, uh, yeah. So love to share more when, when we get to that point. Sure. Thank you very much, uh, David, uh, sharing uh, your uh, entrepreneurial uh, experience with us. Uh, we'll get back to uh, you uh, later. Um, the next uh, speaker will be uh, Galen Li. Um, he is the um, only one among the three uh, speakers today who is uh, working in the um, you know, uh, traditional professional <clears throat> engineering uh, sector. Uh, but in fact, uh, his career is also not so uh, traditional. So uh, perhaps we invite uh, Kalung to share with us uh, his experience. Yep. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Can you all see the screen? Good, yes. Good, good. So I'm not an entrepreneur and I'm really fascinated uh, by Ada's and David's experience. So I, I would like to share some elements in construction management because I worked in the field of construction uh, contracting and up to now like 20 years in the same company, uh, let, let's just say project management, it's my skill. So uh, let, let's say there are like, um, if I select uh, like seven elements, there are people safety, technical, program planning, plans, innovation, and of course the center, the central theme of leadership. So as a background, at the moment, I'm managing a construction project of uh, a certain central Kowloon which is a 
vehicular uh, highway tunnel from the uh, Kaitak region to the Yamate region and inside which our company is responsible for a three kilometer twin tunnel. Uh, each of the tunnel, they talk about three lanes, so they are pretty wide, uh, pretty deep. Uh, contract term is 6.2 billion. It's an NEC contract form, some five years. Us, we are directly uh, contracting with the highway department. We have about us a year. Consultant company surprising us, and un let's, let's say working with us, we have consultant companies for various designs. So that's another, let's say, uh, 3D image of our tunnel. Uh, basically, we have three attacking job sites one in Hormontane, uh, Amate, and Kaikak, Korea, from, from which we enter into quite deep underground and then attack to create our tunnel. So we, we are basically using explosives. So this is a typical small section. I think this is the smallest section, some seven meter high, nine meter wide. We drill holes, we put in explosives, and then we time uh, all these explosives into different delays, each differing by like a few milliseconds, and then we, we blast, uh, and then we pull out the materials. So that's the background against which I show a few aspects. Uh, well, for, first of all, uh, project management, it's about people management. So uh, it's like uh, working with a lot of, um, well, let, let's say a few key departments. Uh, we have a department dealing with all the technical aspects, the technical design method, commercial, dealing with the clients, the main contract and contract under us, procurement. And then of course, we have a big construction team uh, inside which there are like hundreds of workers. Uh, they manage all the uh, subcontract sub sub direct work, uh, manage the tunnel boring machines, a lot of plants and equipment, surveying, uh, how do we underground, how, how, how do we know where we are going underground. Uh, survey is very important, and blasting technique. Plus we, we have a bunch of uh, uh, department heads, uh, safety, quality, environmental, document control, and then there's the department for the administration, cost control and finance. So I guess um, the first point uh, in summary is that uh, as a team of project management, we are not necessarily, let, let's say, the expertise in each of these aspects, but we need to make sure that there are workflows amongst these department heads. And uh, in case there are some specific uh, campaigns, specific topics, we need to create some specific, uh, let's, let's just say, committee and work task force in order to tackle individual problems. So the safety, the, the second aspect, uh, it's really, uh, actually, this should have been the first one. It's about construction safety because at the peak, we are dealing with like uh, 600 workers, uh, operatives of different skills, exposing them to various degree of risk. So uh, managing safety, it's really the primary concern. Of course, it's not really only about putting personal protection equipment. Indeed, uh, uh, about safety, the employer, we as employer, we have a general duty to provide a safe and health working environment for all of our workers. And this is only a high level obligation. So there needs to be in itself a safety management system with in itself a lot of individual elements. So if I pick a few of these elements, we have to, de we have to issue a safety policy <clears throat> with clear measurable goals. We need to instill a safety culture so that people knows that uh, the entire project management, they are, uh, they are on it. They, they put safety as the top priority, that uh, each of them knows that there's their duty uh, on their behalf. And also they, they have the right to say no. <clears throat> we, as, uh, we as project management, we need to visit the sites. We need to get in the ground to show some visible leadership. We need to put the standard rules special rules, etc. We need to devise some uh, plan, regular inspection to, to look at the processes, to look at the behaviors, etc. So this is big in itself. And we also need to get to the ground. <clears throat> so this is me, myself, uh, inside a hanging basket, uh, which uh, underneath, this is like a hundred meter deep drop shaft. And the safety aspect is really on this lifeline here, uh, which has an automatic clutch so the, the, the idea is that uh, as management, uh, there are like, like 
you know, like tens, tens, hundreds of documents coming to, to your desk, you need to sign, then you, you, you need to have a sense of, uh, you need to have an in instinct to, to detect uh, which you, you need to dig deeper and to investigate personally in order to know what uh, you sign up to are really, uh, are really uh, providing the safety measures to your workers. So third aspect, uh, we, uh, of course, then, we, uh, this tunnel project in itself, it's involving like uh, pulling out some 3 million tons of material from the underground. So there, there's a big part of planning and progress monitoring. This is just what I extracted from my university notes, all these uh, goal setting, targets, application, updates, identify problem, replan because of the problem and keeping track of the key performance index. That's the theory, but uh, if you put into actual tools, the, these are the, let's say, day-to-day -day, uh, planning tools we, we have in front of us. So that's the um, we, 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 we will be planning basically the speed of the tunneling. As you can see, uh, there are regions we, we, we can go faster and there are regions because of very bad ground, we are, we'll, we'll be going quite slow. So this is where, where we plan our major uh, activities. Then we have various other planning tools in order to track the actual progress against the planning submission. Uh, we have all these zigzag lines uh, regularly, weekly basis to see where we are behind. Plants and innovation. So uh, we are dealing with a lot of machines here. Uh, we have like big tunnel boring machines. I understand uh, Elon Musk is trying to put hands in there, smaller tunnel boring machine. Uh, we also constantly have to balance between sound uh, established machinery versus innovation. And this is where in uh, a recently completed project, we are trying out a kind of robotic arm for drilling. We also uh, innovated a kind of bespoke system to install all, 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 all these things. I, I would say they are not quite able to be scaled up because of uh, all the specificity of individual uh, pro projects, but the idea it's innovate the idea of innovation it's uh, let's say let's say the uh, underlying theme. Let's move on. I just show here um, one of the main interesting bits about um, large scale projects that you you, you get to you, you get to arrange manage huge machine that's a front wheel loader. The bucket size is like uh, four cubic meter. It's front wheel uh, because you need really the uh, main thrust of the motion to be close to the bucket in order to insert deep into the mud pile. Uh, we have a lot of logistical calculation, making sure that we can be pulling out 4,000 ton of material underground. So each of the operation, um, bucket size, traveling distance, number of machines uh, needs to be well planned in order to cope, let's say, with the overall planning. Then uh, there are also a lot of application of what we learned uh, in school, in Hong Kong University. This is talked about doing geological investigation underground, pulling all these coring uh, samples in order to ascertain the nature conditions of the ground. So uh, in fact, if we are hitting into very competent uh, solid rock, there's no problem because by then you punch a hole, uh, the ground is going to be stable, but it's really these kind of, let's say bad materials that we are very scared of because if we are hitting into so-called fog zone, all these uh, bad materials, they can collapse and underground water can run in and your tunnel will squeeze, collapse, so as the uh, surface will settle. So one of the main, let's say, um, workflows is to ascertain along the tunnel or the situation and device where uh, we need to do some ground treatments, etc. Then a lot of analysis, application, you know, structural modeling, calculation of the ground settlement, calculation of the slip, let's say, uh, uh, surface of a certain slope. So we uh, make use of a lot of BIM in order to better visualize our construction sequence. We prepare a lot of all these graphical, simple 
method statement for the workers and operatives to understand more. Uh, these are the uh, uh, design versus the actual. So this this photo I'm showing here, uh, it's the temporary work design which overhangs uh, the basket which I hopped on just now. I show you, and I was really careful to check all these all, all these bolts to be correctly drilled, correctly grouted because not only me myself live hanging there, but all, all the all the workers. So it's really serious uh, business. A lot of BIM application for sequence, clash analysis, quantity, and 3D visualization. So I think I will probably stop here by showing uh, one example of making use of BIM modeling in order to better visualize the sequence. Because we, we, are, we are talking about cramming a lot of activities inside a tight spot uh, over a very short uh, period of time. So if we don't uh, use all these BIM modeling, it's really difficult to just look at a piece of paper and all these uh, time chain age program. So far, that's the final slide. At the moment, uh, in my project, uh, this is the first time we created a dedicated innovation department. Uh, we are looking into a digital twin model. Maybe I can uh, have some collaboration with David afterwards. The idea is that we have like hundreds of machines and also workers, whether we can create a digital twin of the entire construction uh, real, real, real time. This is uh, good, good stuff. This is a pair of stereo camera installed to the back of all these big machines so that we can uh, detect people instantaneously and alert the driver if we are coming very close to them. Because in the mining business, it's very often to have serious or even fatal accidents around uh, people crushed by heavy machines. I guess I ran out of my time, so that, that's probably that's probably it of my sharing. It's about construction management. Thank you, guys. All right, thank you very much, uh, uh, Galen. Um, now, all three uh, speakers already uh, gave us a uh, briefing. So let's move on to uh, the discussion uh, section. <clears throat> um, a couple of questions uh, came up to my mind. I would like to throw them out and then uh, each of you can uh, jump in and uh, give us some <clears throat> of your uh, advices or wisdoms. Uh, the topic today is about innovation uh, and uh, leadership. Um, why is innovation uh, so important in uh, today's uh, career development and is it a, a necessary part or a crucial element in going to leadership? Can you uh, share with us some of your thinking? David, you want to yep. I, you want to go first? Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 it seems uh, yeah, it's just unmuted. Um, so um, as a as a startup, like innovation, basically is really the core. Um, you know, to it. Um, you know, we, we found a company and we want to create something that is different, that is better, um, and deliver new value to our users, take users to new places. Uh, my startup, first startup did an online spreadsheet um, and, and it's really, you know, a few months before Google launched theirs. And then we have our, you know, really interesting, you know, competition with Google and try to see, oh, what exactly, like how online spreadsheet is different, is better, and now it become a standard of like, oh, you know, we will expect, you know, a spreadsheet, you can have multiple people call, you know, you know uh, uh, working on it and have like, you know, oh, all these all these things update in real time. And it, you know, from, from when we started, you know, it become a standard. And it's also the you know, reason why like Apple want to, you know, buy us. Um, and 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 you know really incorporate that technology into 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 um, uh, you know you know that suite of, of software um, and and like in my in my second startup is also that like oh how we can create something you know I I remember when we first started um, that the first thing we didn't break through wow like AI was very new in mobile 
and we well our first model basically 500 meg and um and and we basically start building it it only works like in two hours a day um you know when the, the sun is right up there and uh, you're outside and you know then we don't have the noise of like you know your shadow you don't have your your refraction and then you know we have something that works and you know from then like, we keep breaking through different kinds of like barriers and and and, and um solving interesting problem to get to a place where oh now we can have something that that like really understand like what you're doing in front of it uh, in front of the camera right and 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 you know and you know i cannot recount how many patterns i have already maybe five maybe ten um but but that is that's basically the process of like you know creating something new and 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 when you have something there like it become it become our a, a force to basically pull people and capital like um you know chores chores you and then you basically have you know something i have a have a company have a product and you have a customers we have you have partners and and that is 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 basically the really kind of the 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 the, the, the gravity of a startup and and it's like how you i can recruit the you know um some of the best people um you know former apple would leave apple to join me you know like leave like google to join me and that is the that is the, what the core uh, uh feel like when you build a startup that's the innovation what are you doing that is different that's better that is that's something that people want and when you have that then like you know yeah, good things start to happen. I would say that good things start to happen. All right, wonderful. So, uh, how about uh, Ada? You have anything to share with us about innovation and leadership? Uh, so, I think innovation is uh, the thing that might make us uh, our life more fun, less boring, and okay. also um, I always told I always tell my students if you're not flexible, you don't innovate, you will be replaced by AI machine can replace you. So we have no choice, we have to innovate. And I can give you an example on um, engineering education actually made us quite flexible and made us to innovate and connect us to different applications. Say last night, I got a call from my former student. He already graduated a few years ago. He called me and said, Ada, uh, I have an idea where I could detect COVID-19 on a chip which is disposable and I can mail to people and then they could just put that saliva on that chip and it's able to detect COVID-19 and it's disposable very cheap because it's a silicon-based solution. And then I say, okay. And I hear, you know, I keep hearing his story, you know, how he did it. And then now he gave me several uh, 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 reading that I need to go over to reveal them and then get back to him. Mm -hmm. Um, and the reason why he talked to me is because he wants to look for funding to, come to support that, right? Um, so this is an example to show that with the engineering education, uh, we are able to, we are, we are more flexible, we can adapt, and at the same time, we can use our skill set to solve real life problem easily. Very good. Um, Gala, you want to uh, give us some uh, advices? Uh, well, I really don't have much to offer. I, uh, uh, to, be, to be honest, I, I think in the construction field, uh, the level of innovation is really pretty low as compared with uh, what uh, Ada and Dave have just shown in their respective field. But nevertheless, uh, I guess um, so, some, some of our students are also aware that the government is pushing forward a so-called construction 2.0 initiative inside which uh, there's a big push to adopt uh, innovative solutions. So um, uh, whilst, uh, what I want to say is that whilst, whilst uh, we are behind, uh, I still believe that it, uh, it's important to always uh, have innovation, innovative solutions, um, kind of mindset because uh, this is the uh, the way to engage this is the, the way to engage people to try to attack problems uh, from their own initiative and from from new angle and that is the reason why uh, even in our project we are, we, we are trying to form a cycle or form a team just to deal with 
I think being uh, behind is uh, not necessarily a uh, bad thing because uh, it also means uh, you have a lot of rooms in front of you. You are able to apply uh, innovative oh. elements into the profession. You are able to bring your profession one level up and become a core pioneer in the development. So this is exactly why I think uh, we would like to uh, stress the importance of uh, innovation so that you will one day become a uh, very important uh, leader in that particular uh, discipline. So um, I have a few other questions that I like to ask in fact, but I also noticed that we are receiving a lot of uh, questions from the audience. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, some of these uh, questions also overlap with uh, some of those I like to ask. So I am now going directly uh, to um, the uh, Q&A uh, section raised by, uh, you know, the audience. Um, this is a question uh, for uh, David, uh, for David Lee. Uh, what do you think about the prospect of uh, having a startup in Hong Kong? Particularly, uh, the economy is not good around this time. Do you want okay. to uh, give us some advice? Sure. Um, is is uh, uh, yeah, I think from my experience, I found my first startup when SARS hit Hong Kong. Whenever there's risk and whenever it's a bad time, there are also opportunities, right? And if I, I leave the university, when I, if, I, if I graduate at a time where like the economy, economy is so good, I would not be able to manage to recruit some of the best and brightest and the smartest people I know who are just my classmates. And, and it's because that we have a really bad time and there's not a lot of opportunities out there, I managed to form a team with like some of the brightest people I have ever known. Um, and who just happens to be, you know, in Hong Kong U and, and, and studying with me, just next to me, just my classmates. And we are still working together to this state. So like, you know, don't underestimate those, what the great thing, those bad time, um, you know, can, can, can give us. And the company was acquired by Apple in 2008, which is like, you know, like the, 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 the sublime thing, which like the whole economy seemed to be like, you know, the world seemed to be burning up and, you know, we, 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 we were acquired by Apple and, you know, and ride are basically the long ride of like, you know, how Apple now become like, you know, 30x more valuable. And I still have like, you know, that's still, you know, it, it, it can end up to be pretty good. Um, and we are now in the global pandemic of COVID-19 and like, you know, I didn't recognize that like, we yes, we do a, like a, 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 you know, a training app, which have, have uh, 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 that, oh, you can, you can do this workout at home. And we did not realize we actually built a, 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 a you know, a, a, an app that's like really right for this time and receive a huge COVID bump of like, you know, we have signed up like, you know, close to a million users in the last quarter. And, and, and also during this time, you know, I, I think what I want to say is that like, you know, it really doesn't matter. Like, you know, it's a good time or bad time, you know, because you will see all these cycles you know, after you basically been, you've been through it like a couple of times, like you know, all, all these cycles, sometimes bad times, sometimes good time. But like, you know, if you are, you know, focused on creating, you know, what you want to create with a vision, and this is what draws people to you. It's what draws, like you know, capital and people to you, and and you know, and and it honestly doesn't really matter much. And sometimes it actually create opportunities, something that we have even not um, uh, anticipated, that we don't know. Like, well, COVID nineteen hit, then like our, our users and our our um, you know revenue jump off the roof. Our we need to go off the roof, and we did not expect that. Um, so that was, you know, when there's, you know, bad times, always new opportunities as well. Um, so just look at the bright side and, um, you know, also look beyond Hong Kong as well. So we have never created, I've never created a company just like for a local market. Um, and, and the opportunities is just everywhere. And, and just like in, in the month of, in the month of April, 
that you know home court is like ranked number four overall app in Thailand. It's like you know, I think if we do anything in Thailand, it'd be hard. Just that like we just can the you know the 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 market and 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 can pull you into some places which you have never expected before. And so most important thing is just like you know start doing, start building, and 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 have a vision, and um, you would get there. Thank you, David. I cannot agree with you more uh, that whenever there are challenges, there are always uh, opportunities ahead for us to uh, grasp. Uh, there's another question uh, for uh, Ada. Uh, thanks so much for the amazing talk. Uh, the question is, uh, compared with the current pacemaker, how much money is saved using your mini pacemaker? Also, uh, the diseases you are focusing on are most prevalent in elderly. Since elderly are most at risk of post-surgery complications, have you assessed the surgical risk for implantation in older animals? Ada, please. Okay, so for the first question, the pacemaker, um, actually the mini pacemaker is just for demonstration purpose to show that, you know, how small that we can make the things to cause the repeated actions. Uh, I never think about making a mini pacemaker, but anyhow, the technology already licensed out to uh, uh, startups. They, they try to do the translational job to make it useful. I'm not interested in that, to be honest. Uh, I, I like research more. So um, therefore, how much money is saved and all this, I'm not quite sure. So. Uh, I will let our licensee to answer those questions. Um, but for the diseases that I'm tackling, that uh, seems to be more for the elderly, but it, it is a correlation that because we get all our organs are not uh, malfunction. So we have certain warranty time for our organs. We try to extend it longer and longer because our nice brain, it is getting longer and longer. And therefore it will have a lot of diseases. So therefore, it is not a surprise that a lot of diseases that I correlate with the uh, elderly. So implantation, the reason why we want to make it really small, it is because of the implantation. We want to make minimally evasive implantation. For example, for the pacemaker that we make, when we do the uh, in vivo testing on animal, we use not the open chest kind of surgery to implant them. We have a catheter that is bringing that tiny pacemaker through our blood, through the animal's blood vessel. So we draw a hole in the neck area or the thigh area with the catheter, just deliver the pacemaker inside the heart chamber to do the pacing. So I hope that with this type of mini HRI devices, it will make the implantation much easier. For example, the artificial pancreas that we're talking about, we're trying to implant them, it is subcutaneously underneath the skin, just to provide unlimited supply of glucagon and insulin. So with, with the electronics approach, hopefully it will also make the implantation minimally evasive. All right, thank you. So the next question is, uh, what is the prospect of engineering career in Hong Kong? Because uh, Ada and David are now in California. Only uh, Garland and myself are in uh, Hong Kong. Uh, because I'm the Dean of Engineering, probably no one will believe in uh, what I said. My answer is obviously a positive one. So I would like to invite uh, Garland to comment a bit on the current prospect of engineering career in Hong Kong. Well, I uh, speak from my perspective, uh, in particular on civil engineering, I can see the medium term prospect as very bright. Uh, because of the population expansion, we have a huge shortage of building uh, flat space uh, plus the expanding population. So that's why there will be uh, a lot of uh, demands for new flats, new buildings. Then uh, there will be uh, uh, there will be associated demand for the infrastructure. So short term is very bright. Uh, in, in fact, uh, well. Uh, maybe uh, I, if I speak from my company perspective, you also don't believe me, but uh, in fact, uh, our company, we are very busy preparing for a lot of uh, tendering uh, for, for, for buildings and civil engineering uh, in the coming one year. So positive. And I want to add one thing. It is what you're studying. It doesn't mean that you have to do it in your career. 
engineering is just to blow by you with the analytical training. And you can apply your analytical training to any problems that you feel you're passionate about. So don't limit yourself if it's to a very particular narrow box of things that you could do. This is exactly the uh, next question I like to ask uh, all of you, which is <clears throat> how studying at Hong Kong U Engineering helped develop your uh, career. I think Ada already uh, gave us some of uh, her uh, insight, which is. Uh, you don't necessarily need to go into uh, the engineering uh, profession because uh, studying engineering uh, gives you probably a broader <clears throat> dimension of uh, what you can do in the long term. How about other uh, two uh, speakers? Do you have any, uh, you know, a comment on 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 this uh, question? How studying engineering in Hong Kong, you you know, um, leads you to the current uh, career development? Um, you know, uh, first of all, I have have to be absolutely agree with what uh, what Dr. Poon have said that like you know you have are a, a set of tools that you acquire for um, like studying engineering, you know, in Hong Kong U. And like I, you know, yeah, I have to be like honest, like you know, when I you know start building companies, and like you know after a short while that my team don't let me write code anymore. Um, you know, they always try to, you know, you should have like better things to do. Um, and, and, but I still have that, like, this is a great tool set that I have, like, you know, in my, in my, you know, in, in my set of tools that I constantly apply to be more rigorous, to be, um, you know, more analytical, to be, you know, breaking down problems. <clears throat> um, and, and those basically are, you know, a, a set of tools that basically can apply when you're thinking about designing, you know, you know, and, 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 you know, that, that feature, you know, can, you know, when you, when you're basically discussing a deal, you know, with a company or with, with your, you know, investor or potential acquirer, you know, that also, you know, give you like that, that something and give you a lot of patience because when you're going to sit there, basically work on a very comprehensive problem, break down the problems and like solving one by one. Right. And, and just that I cannot just name that how beneficial that training have been um uh, uh you know for me as an entrepreneur that that like you know we're solving like you know a wide variety of problems you know one you know one you know one day we're gonna really gonna talk to you instead of our engineering team and figure out problems you know and 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 you know on, on other end now, now i mean sitting with the design team and things thinking about things to design um and those two those analytical skills is just extreme, extremely valuable I'm not saying that you would also kind of pick up like other skills as well as you go, which is also necessary. Um, but I would say like that, that training gave me a lot of great, great foundation. All right. Thank you. So one last question I'd like to ask you before we end this uh, forum, uh, as time is uh, really tight. Uh, the last question is, what are the tips uh, that you would like to offer to our fresh graduates or students who are interested in uh, studying engineering. Uh, any tips you'd like to offer to them? Maybe I go first. Sure. Uh, just for your passion, don't think too much. I think we try to optimize our lives too much, optimize every aspect. But I think the most important part it is you just have to follow your passion and doing the random walk. And at the end, your path will towards the, the kind of things that you would like to do from the bottom of your heart. Don't optimize too much. All right, good. I agree with you. Wow. Gala, well, you, you want okay. to add something? Well, <laughs> Ada, I cannot agree with you more. Uh, I uh, actually want to talk about follow, following passion. Uh, so if I would like to add uh, it, uh, I I would say uh, there's a part about acquiring academic or let's just say some professional skill set. But down the road, I, I believe it's a matter of, let's say, character. Uh, it will be down to trust and uh, respect for people, communication. I, I think those are also very important in the flow when you go further down the road. But really, uh, following your passion, it's, it, it's a big thing. Passion, empathy, right? 
Yeah. Uh, Russia, empathy. Wonderful. David, wow. you want to add a final remark? Sure. Like, you know, what Kalang and Dr. Poon said um, is, is absolutely the way to go. Um, you know, and, and it's always that passion, always that vision that draws, like, you know, it's just a really important step, you know, towards success. Um, and, and, and it's just really following your heart. And, you know, I think, you know, you would not regret looking back because I, you know, you would regret if you're not following your heart and you follow your heart, you would not regret. Like you would accept, you would basically put yourself at ease. All right, this is the ring. This is the thing that we want, we, we want to go and would accept you know, whatever happens to it and, and, and then keep going. And at the end, you might be, you might be at your destination before we even, like, and also probably enjoy the process. Um, and you know, that just, just, uh, uh, you know, a path of happiness, I would say, just follow your passion is just the, the path of happiness. Um, so well, let's, let's end here then. All right. Wonderful. I was asked to give a, uh, two minutes, uh, concluding remark before we end this, uh, section. I have to say thank you to all our, uh, alumni and uh you know uh, participants uh in this uh, forum uh in that um if you ask me the question of uh whether engineering is uh you know a uh a topic uh worth a study uh my observation is that i think the timing nowadays is uh, perhaps uh, one of the best uh moment uh the reason is that uh you know uh Every day we are talking about how we make use of uh, technology to make our world uh, better or how to uh, save lives, how to, you know, uh, bring uh, new technology to make uh, people live a uh, happier life. Uh, we have uh, ample uh, opportunities uh, to go uh, deeper into uh, some uh, very exciting uh, projects nowadays. Uh, if you have engineering knowledge, uh, basically, uh, you don't necessarily need to go into engineering as a profession, but you can make good use of it to uh, help tackle many uh, interesting uh, global uh, challenges, as well as, uh, for example, to become an entrepreneur, uh, to uh, build new uh, products, uh, service, or solutions in order not only to earn a living, but to, uh, you know, uh, make your life uh, more satisfied and to make a uh, bigger impact to uh, society. Um, some of you may be aware that uh, we uh, receive uh, a uh, major uh, gift donation from uh, one of our uh, mm -hmm. alumni in the uh, 50s. Uh, he uh, donated uh, $120 million to Hong Kong Engineering to build up uh, Innovation Wing Phase 1 and also Innovation Wing Phase 2. Uh, Innovation Wing Phase 1 uh, will be open uh, after summer. So all the new students and existing students will be benefiting from it. Uh, we are uh, going to have a 2,000 square feet uh, maker lab area, which is uh, one of the largest in Asia uh, to uh, bring uh, student learning activities, project-based activities uh, into the facility so that students in different uh, interest group can work together to uh, tackle some uh, global uh, challenges. Uh, this is, uh, we believe that this will be an area that we are able to uh, nurture uh, innovation and also uh, to uh, create uh, future uh, leaders uh, into uh, our society. So um, it's getting late in uh, California now, and I think it is also time for us to go for lunch in Hong Kong. So I don't want to keep you here too long. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining this wonderful talk. I hope that we're able to get uh, more of this type of uh, activities uh, on a continuous uh, basis. Stay tuned. Thank you.